Having discipline with yourself makes you feel more confident because it makes you feel like, okay, I can set a goal for myself and I can succeed at it. We're going to be talking about five daily rituals that I've been incorporating into my normal routine that has helped me stay nice, slim, and fit. 2025 is coming around and y'all, we are not waiting another day. We're not waiting another week. And we're for sure not waiting until January 1st to start reaching our goals. We are starting right now. So if this is the type of content you like to see, make sure you hit that notification bell and subscribe to this channel so you never miss another video from me. My first daily ritual that is always in my routine that helped me stay slim and fit all throughout these eight years of my fitness journey is controlling my cravings. And yes, I'm a human being and I get cravings too, but there's certain things that you can do throughout the day to help decrease your cravings. And that can drastically help you shed fat, help you stay slim, just by managing what exactly you're putting into your body. Now, when it comes to cravings, everybody has it. Me personally, I crave sweets. I am a sweets girl. Yes, savory is cool, but when it comes to cake, ice cream your girl is trying to grab some and trying to eat way too much than what my body needs so yes i do understand and i'm a person that has trouble with cravings at times too but we need to start off with what kind of deficiency is causing these cravings some deficiencies can include lack of sleep you're not getting eight plus hours a night you're staying up way too late which is giving you more time to snack throughout the night another deficiency is stress which we will be talking about stress later on in this video. Maybe your job, your household, your friends or family causes you to have stress. And last, it could be just dehydration. Maybe you're not drinking enough water. You're not getting the appropriate nutrients or vitamins in your body. So your body may be deprived within itself. And of course, it could be the type of medications that you're on. So I would advise you to go to a medical professional to see maybe what are the side effects of the type of medications that you're on. The first part of controlling your cravings is to figure out what is the underlying condition? And that could possibly help you lose those cravings that you currently have. But let's say that you started working on getting more sleep, drinking more water, but you still find yourself to still have these cravings. The first tip is just to leave it at the store. When you are going grocery shopping, you are exposed to all kinds of food. You have your healthy foods and then you have your not so healthy treats. All of the bad type of treats snacks packaged foods that are not really the best for us are in the middle section of the grocery store i advise you to just avoid it don't go through the chip section because next thing you know you're gonna start picking up a pack of chips picking up some oreos because your cravings are just out of control so i would just ignore that section making sure you're staying on the outer section of the grocery store where all the fruits the vegetables the lean meats that's where you want to stay and just avoid getting any kind of bad foods and then when you go home, if you don't have any snacks or things that are tempting to eat, it's a lot easier not to eat it because it's not there. So just leave it at the store. Don't be tempted to buy snacks when you're out grocery shopping. Another tip that helped me stop my cravings and is helping me stay slim and fit is I stopped rewarding myself. I used to be the type of girl that let's say I'm having like a bad day at work. I would award myself with a pack of M&Ms because I am an M&M girl. That is my favorite candy. But let's say I'm just so stressed out at work, super busy, I've been on my feet for 12 plus hours sometimes I'm like, oh, I had a pretty bad day. Let me reward myself, make me feel better about myself with a pack of m and m But I started to stop rewarding myself, whether that's a positive or a negative. Even if you're a college student, you got an A on your test and then you reward yourself with going out with your friends for drinks or having a peace of night at your house. You need to stop using those bad foods as rewards because at the end of the day, there's really nothing special about unhealthy foods 
food. Ask yourself, is this really an award? Start rewarding yourself with other positive kinds of things. That could either be taking a walk outside in the park, or it could simply be just watching your favorite movie, maybe getting your nails or hair done, something other than food to help decrease those cravings. Because if you keep using food as a reward, it's going to be very hard to stay in shape and to stay slim. Try to figure out why you're craving these kinds of food. Is it because you're not getting enough protein in your diet? Are you skipping meals? Are you not eating breakfast? Maybe you're not eating enough. Make sure you're eating three meals a day and making sure you're adding in a protein. And last, start replacing your cravings with healthy alternatives. So for example, if you are a savory girl, start replacing those savory treats or foods with healthier alternatives. Lightly salted cashews or walnuts. You can also try like a veggie tray. You can use cottage cheese, Greek yogurt, or hummus as a dip. As for my sweet tooth girlies, you can always substitute for strawberries, blueberries, pineapple, apples, mangoes, those are all of my favorite fruits. And yes, sometimes I do have those cravings where I want to get some sweets, but instead I grab some fruit and those cravings go away. So yes, there are some ways to prevent cravings, but just remember, sometimes it's just good to say no. That can be the answer to all of your problems. There are times when my discipline came in where I wanted to get something unhealthy, but then I just told myself, no, I don't need it. And when I do that, I just feel so much better about my myself if I end up getting a healthier snack or just choosing a healthier option. I always feel just so good about myself. And then it makes me realize that this one simple no that I'm making is making me 1% better every single day. It's pushing myself 1% higher to reaching my dream goals and reaching my dream body. So sometimes you just have to look at it that way and just say no to the cravings, no to the sweets. At the end of the day, you're going to feel so good and your body is going to feel amazing. My second daily ritual is either meal planning or meal prepping. Meal prepping is when you're taking time on the weekend or just someday throughout the week where you're taking an hour or so to plan out your meals ahead of time, portion out your foods, so that way during a busy week ahead of you, you already have all of your food prepped and ready. You don't have to worry about what you're gonna eat for lunch, for dinner, because everything is already set and ready for you. There are so many benefits when it comes comes to meal prepping and I personally been meal prepping since I was 17 so even during my high school years I was meal prepping it's been some time since I got into the habit of meal prepping so it just takes time patience and consistency but all it takes is you to try to do it over and over and over again until it naturally becomes a habit of yours. I am making sure that I am writing down everything that I am getting at the grocery store and making a list, bringing it to the store with me so that way I know exactly what I'm gonna get and what I don't need in the house. And this even helps me save more money and it just keeps me on track of my goals. So always meal plan ahead. I personally would say if you have time over the weekend, whether that's a Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, Monday. You're taking one day out your weekend, dedicate one hour to yourself, get in the kitchen and make healthy foods, make lunch and dinner. Then for breakfast, maybe you can write down exactly what you're going to eat. So that way you know what to cook throughout the week. But for lunch and dinner, I want you to meal prep five meals for each. Now, five meals can be a lot, especially if you're like new to meal planning. And it's not really the best to just go cold turkey where you're just going all in, you're eating healthy five days out the week that can definitely be challenging so I would definitely say to start small and start slow if you are someone that's new to this you want to start off by building healthy habits in the kitchen I would say start meal planning and prepping your foods maybe two or three days out the week so two or three lunch and two or three dinner options then when you become used to those two or three meals throughout the week then you can start bumping it up to four or five even six days. But I personally will say start small and start slow. When it comes to meal prepping, I know people say, oh, I cannot eat the same thing every day. 
that I do understand, but there are plenty of different recipes that you can try, which some are even simple as well. All of you have to do is go on Pinterest, look up healthy meal plan inspo, and you will see plenty of things. You can always mix up your meal prep. You don't always have to eat chicken, rice, and veggies. When it comes to me, I personally like to keep it very, very simple. That just works best for me, especially with my busy schedule. Maybe sometimes here and there, I'll try a new recipe, but what works best for me and keeps me on track every single day is just keeping the basics. One protein, one carb source, one fat, adding in a fiber, a fruit, things like that I'm always adding into my meal prep and it has been working for me for eight years. Make sure you're buying containers and separating your food because once you're packing your lunch for work or when you come home, it's so much easier to just grab the container, put it in your lunchbox and go about your day. So make sure that you are separating your food so that way it just makes it ready and prepared for you, especially when you're on the go and freeze your food as well. It helps make the food last a lot longer so you can make 10 plus meals, put it in the freezer and it will last for at least up to two and a half weeks. The third daily ritual that has helped me stay slim and fit is managing my cortisol levels. And if you do not know what cortisol is, it is a hormone in your body that regulates stress. The stress hormone reduces inflammation in your body, suppresses your immune system, and aids in building up your metabolism. And if you have too much cortisol in your body, that can negatively affect your metabolism, appetite, gut health, and muscle mass, which all can lead to depleting your body and makes it a lot harder harder to lose fat and stay slim. So we want to start managing our cortisol levels when it comes to fitness. Any kind of low impact workouts like Pilates, vigorously walking, yoga, dancing, doing things like that helps manage your cortisol level, but also just like non-fitness things. Anything that helps you relax, helps bring down your anxiety and your stress levels. It can simply be taking a bubble bath, lighting a candle, watching your favorite movie, making sure that you're not going on your phone first thing in the morning, having a hair, nail, and skin regimen, all of that can aid in to lowering your cortisol levels because you are allowing your body to become stress-free. And there are some foods that can make your cortisol levels high as well. Some foods that you want to avoid will be anything sugary, alcohol, caffeine, yes, those energy Alani drinks needs to go, any kind of pre-workouts, energy drinks, processed foods, all of that causes your cortisol levels to be high. And now we want to start to regulate those cortisol levels and bring it back down. We need to start adding in appropriate nutrients and vitamins. So for example, we need to start getting more magnesium and vitamin B in our diet. And some foods that have a high amount of magnesium includes avocados, bananas, seeds, and for vitamin B, eggs, leafy greens, and Greek yogurt are great options. Now, we also want to make sure that we're getting quality protein in. So we gotta stay away from the beef jerky, protein bars, protein drinks, things like that that are not quality protein and start getting in our lean meats, our eggs, our fish, our poultry, things like that are real protein, real quality foods that are going to help make sure you get those appropriate vitamins and minerals in your diet. And then last but not least, we need to add in our omega-3 fatty acids, which includes salmon, Salmon, walnuts, and edamame. So when it comes to cortisol, there are plenty of things that can cause your cortisol levels to increase or just your stress to increase. Not all stress is bad stress. Stress is just how we react to things. It's a normal part of us. Avoiding stress completely is not really healthy for us, but we have to make sure we are managing our stress and making sure it's on the lower end. And by the tips in the categories that I gave you, start taking a few into consideration, add them into your routine, you'll be able to start shedding more fat and start decreasing your stress levels. And of course, I wrote down everything for you guys. So you can screenshot this right here. If you want a better, bigger, and more clear view, then just click the link below on my website and you can screenshot it from there. The fourth 
first daily ritual that has kept me slim and fit for eight years is always adding in a daily movement or exercise. Now, when it comes to exercising, I'm a person that has a busy schedule. I am a registered nurse and I work 12 throughout the week. So yes, there are times when I cannot get a good workout in, but that doesn't mean I am shying away from just getting in my daily movement. So that could be simply just walking in the park, taking a stroll outside around your neighborhood, doing a home workout, working on my core, just doing any kind of daily movement is going to help you stay slim. When it comes to fitness, you don't always have to strive for the best thing. Strive to hit the gym five times out the week when you know that's not realistic for you. Start off by just trying to get in daily steps. Get in those 10,000 steps per day. And then when you have time, maybe two or three days out the week, that is when you can get that exercise in at the gym. You can do weightlifting, you can do Pilates, you can do whatever kind of workouts that interest you. But overall, what helped me stay slim is always just having some daily movement. That can even be running errands, going to the mall, going to the grocery store where you're constantly just walking. So do not underestimate the power of just walking and always make sure that you're getting some kind of daily movement in and this will help you stay slim and fit. the last ritual that has kept me slim and fit, always striving to be as disciplined as possible. Now, when a lot of people start their fitness journey, they always start off with motivation. It's that initial spark that interests you, that catches your eye, that catches your attention. Motivation is that initial spark that gets you excited to complete a certain task. Motivation is the why behind your actions, but discipline is what keeps you going when motivation is not there all the time. It's the ability to do something despite temptations, despite obstacles that may come your way. Discipline is when you get things done no matter what. And when it comes to fitness and health, I strive to be as disciplined as possible more than just being motivated. Because when it comes to motivation, motivation comes and goes. There's gonna be days when you're super motivated to get things done, get your workout in, have a good morning routine, eat a healthy breakfast, and then there's sometimes where you just want to lay in bed all day, scroll on your phone, and just not do anything for the day. But then when you have that discipline, discipline is when the motivation is not there, but you get up because you know that this is what you have to do in order to become the person that you want to be. Discipline is what helps you build habits and stay consistent. So how does this help you stay in shape and slim? Is when the days that when you're not feeling as motivated, you're relying on that discipline to keep you moving, to keep you going. So instead of me talking about ways to become motivated, I can give you guys a few tips on how to become disciplined. And with this comes the three R's, which includes routine, reminder, and reward. Discipline is developed by first making a routine. So routine is writing down exactly what you're going to eat, exactly what workouts you're going to do, planning ahead so that way it's a lot easier to build a habit with the routine that you're following. Setting reminders, having your notebook, your notes on your phone, a planner, and writing down reminders on when you're going to do this task. So that way when the day comes around, you know that you have tasks to get done. And last but not least, discipline is created by just rewarding yourself. And we talked about this earlier, we're not going to reward ourselves with unhealthy habits. We're going to reward ourselves with having a bowl of fruit, taking a walk with your dog, watching your favorite movie, something like that that can actually over time build motivation to make you more disciplined. So follow these three R's, routine, reward, and reminder, and this will help you build the discipline that you always desired. Just remember that your fitness and health journey is going to be challenging. Nothing about this journey is going to be easy, but just remember that gap, that gap between the person you are right now versus the person you want to be. 
that gap is everything that we talked about today. If you take, if not all, but just one or two tips from this video, it will help you build a great relationship with yourself and your body, and you will become that person that you always desired. It only takes that initial step. Once you take that initial step, then it's progress from here on out but you have to put in the work. You have to decide for yourself that this is what you want to do. This is who you want to become. You want to become someone that is obsessed with themselves, that loves every part of themselves. And when that comes with time, dedication, consistency, and balance. But you will get there. I promise you will. If you like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe to this channel and comment down below what your current fitness and health goal is. Make sure you stay connected with me by following all of my socials. All of my links are right down below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.